Hi, I'm Ruth. I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. We look forward to a great time sharing together. Mm -hmm. Got a great guest in a few minutes, but we're going to be looking at some things in the news as we start off. Uh, Ruth, I, I imagine that you have noticed over the course of the last several months that things are getting expensive. Oh my. Where do you Very see it the most? Expensive. I've noticed it, well, especially at the grocery store, I go I pretty much every day. And yes, it is very expensive. You'll get a bag, mm -hmm. it's like 50, $60. And the other day you came home, he came home and he's like, you know how much this cost? I think, how much, was, you had a bag? Was it a bag? Oh boy, I think. Not much, like and it was like $60. So yes, at the grocery store, especially eggs right now are super expensive. Right, a lot of things, a lot of things have gotten expensive. Well, this is how it kind of is, is fitting into the news. U.S. households, their debt has risen now to the highest level that we've seen since 2008. Now, of course, 2008 was the time of the, uh, the housing yeah. bubble and the mm -hmm. crisis that followed there um, as we kind of looked at all of those things from years gone by. Uh, it shows that we have increased by $320 billion in the final three months of 2022, and we hit a 15-year high of $17 wow, wow. trillion dollars in household mm -hmm. debt. That means that the average U.S. household uh, owed a total of $142,680. That is a lot of, that's a lot of money uh, that people are struggling through. And they're, they're telling us, you know, experts are saying, look, you really need to start reining in your debt because a recession is anticipated. Not known exactly when, but there's an anticipation that things are not going to stay rosy. We've seen some positive things in the stock market, but there's really a lot of talk right now that this rally in the stocks is not going to last. I, you know, it brings to mind a lot of things. So we talk about, of course, the interest rates and the inability to pay your credit card off at the end of the month. Right. And so you have a higher debt, like right. we're talking about. But then we also have things that are being um, promoted, like electric cars. Those cost a lot. They do cost a lot. And so you see people driving, you're like, how How do they afford that? I'd like to see, in my mind, I think, I'd like to see where they live. But then you think of the, the housing market, it's getting higher too. Right. So you're getting a, a lot of pressures. If, if it's in your budget, you're going to get less house. For the house we are accustomed to or you would like to have, the price is very high. So how do you get out of it? We might say, well, think of ways to shed your spending, but at the same time, just to have a place to live, even if you're in an apartment, to find an apartment that is, you know, 15, maybe- 15, dollars $2,200 an hour. Yeah, or even less than, I'm thinking now. less than that, where are you gonna find an apartment that's, you can, I mean, it is possible. But then you end up living in, a, in an area that you may feel uncomfortable or it's further or away, safe yeah, or, or, or the or distance. Further, yeah, distance, so then you, th you think, well, now I have to drive 30 minutes home, back and forth, so now, it affects and, and, everything. And here's another thing that's just come out recently, is that based on where fuel prices were just a few weeks ago, it was actually more expensive to drive an electric car than it was to drive an internal combustion engine because the gas at that point was at a, a level that was lower and to charge the car and do all that bit was gonna cost more. Mm -hmm. So you know, you, you're, you're caught. I mean, you are caught at a lot of different levels. Mortgage debt, uh, rose to 290 billion, uh, oh, excuse me, rose by 290 billion last year. And they're, they're telling us now the that the highest. second highest annual increase since the end of the Great Re Recession, um, that the average household um, held about a, hundred, a little over $100,000 in mortgage debt at Ooh. the end of December. And they really believe that the tipping point where it kind of crashes is a little over a hundred and uh about twelve thousand dollars, one hundred thirteen thousand. That's where everything kind of falls apart. So wow. that kind of ties into something else that's in the news today, which has to do with local information about local home prices. And you kind okay. of alluded to that a few moments ago. Uh, in New Mexico, we are our cities here are seeing higher home prices since 2020. So we're only in the beginning part of 2023, and I think we really only have data through 2022. It's too early mm -hmm. in 2023. But Farmington, mm -hmm. is, uh, New Mexico, is listed uh, as this, with the largest year-over-year -year home price increase, according to the National Association of Realtors. Uh, they saw uh, in 2022 the median home 
in Farmington rise by 24.8% wow. in a one-year rise. Albuquerque, uh, counting for two years of increase, uh, went up 32.8% wow. in two years. But the largest year-over-year -year rise was Farmington. So now... But talk, also talked about a Farmington worker would have to ha make a salary or earn per year $78,000 to afford putting down a 5% down payment on a home. And in Albuquerque, uh, a 5% down payment, uh, they would need to earn above six figures. Ooh. So, you know, yeah. you can see, now that, that's a household income. So if you've got two people working, okay, mm -hmm. you understand that that's not for one person working. But that's a lot of money. I mean, that means that probably to own a house, you almost have to have two incomes or one really good income mm -hmm. to be able to make that take place and to make that happen. So, you know, there's some real pressures that there's no way out of. Uh, the inflation numbers are sticking in, in the mid fives, around six. It's hard to shake them. It's hard to get mm -hmm. them down. Um, and they're beginning to become concerned, even with rising interest rates, that we can't really mm -hmm. Deaccelerate those numbers easily, and that's causing a lot of problems. But here's one that has to do with work that I liked. And, and these last two are kind of different, and I think you're going to like these a little bit better. The, in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. they did a pilot project with about 60 companies, tried a four day work week out, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, after the pilot program ended, this encompassed uh, about 2,900 workers enrolled in the trial. They did it between June, December 2022. And at the end of that, 92% of the companies said, we'll keep the four-day work week. How would you like to have a four-day work week cool. every week? That's cool. Well, it said that people uh, were sleeping better. They were less anxious is what they found. And it didn't affect their salary, so uh, that was a good thing. Right. But you know what, what, what happened when uh, 2020 and COVID happened and everything was shut down? I realized how tired I was, or we were, we sure. were so tired. And so being home, it was like, whoa, what's, wow. And, and I think that's true. I think we just go, 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 go. But at the same time with everything going on, you need to work. Yeah, it's a catch 22 because yes. there are other, uh, uh, there's another uh, piece of information out there on a, on a survey or a study that they did that said that the U.S. workers' productivity, at, by and large, was declining. It was at the lowest level since 1947. Really? So, I mean, there's the give and take. I, I do think it is better for you probably physically. I do think it's easy to get worn out. People can get tired. We would watch video clips of us pre-pandemic, <laughs> post-pandemic, and we're like, oh, my goodness. We look tired. Man, that was, we were we looking were rough. Yeah. So I understand that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I, I kind of think a, a four-day work week would be fun. But here's another one. It's about that time of year we're going to change clocks again. How do you, how, what, you do, what do you like better? Do you like it to, to be the uh, daylight savings with the longer evenings, or do you like it to be the standard? What, which is your preference? Longer evenings? Is this longer daytime? Is that what at you're night, talking about? Yeah, lighter, longer at night. That's daylight savings. Right? Yes, that's what I like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. What do you like? I do, too. I okay. like that better. That does mean, though, that a lot of times in the mornings, at least in the, in, as you get closer to wintertime, that it's darker longer in the morning. A little harder to get up. They used to, they often would complain, the kids going to the bus stop in the dark, you know? <laughs> Don't like the kids going to the bus stop in the dark. Well, the New Mexico legislature has uh, been looking at two different bills as they are considering trying to get New Mexico to simply one time period. Now, mm -hmm. uh, one time zone, not moving around. Uh, one of the bills was introduced, Senate Bill 191, by Senator Roberto Gonzalez, but it tied in the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the committee. That would have left us on daylight standard time. Mm -hmm. But another one passed the committee, and this one uh, was Senate Bill 287. It cleared the committee. It was by Senator Cliff Pirtle, and it would leave us on daylight savings time, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so that sounds like more, more your kind of yes. bill. That would be, I mean, I think it's good. It, it really does affect people. And a lot of people have health problems when that change comes, comes about. I think I've heard a lot of that, mm -hmm. like heart, heart attacks. attacks and, like mm -hmm. I think it would be nice to be on one time, like Arizona. I remember when, when our children were in Arizona, it was like so nice. They, didn't, they never changed the time, but they, they don't. And here we are back and forth. So I think it would be nice, but we'll see. This is interesting. Even if uh, the governor signs the bill, 
It says it still has to require congressional approval mm -hmm. for the, the for the time zone change. So or for the, the time differential there. All right, well that brings you up to speed. We'll be back with our guests in a minute. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. As we're continuing through 2023, I want to really encourage you about the importance of your faithful support of Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Many of you are giving and you're supporting this ministry, but I want to talk to those of you who've never given and maybe you really enjoy the great programmers that we have. Many national ministries, people like Joyce Meyer, and James Robison, Andrew Womack, Les Feldick, The 700 Club, Manifest with Perry Stone, Prophecy USA, we could go on and on. A lot of great local ministries. Uh, folks at Legacy Church and New Beginnings, people at uh, Calvary Chapel East with Pastor Gary Cowan and Cal Calvary Chapel Rio Grande Valley with Pastor Ray Aramio and just so many uh, Grace Outreach with Pastor Kent Bernard. Man, just great local ministries as well. And, and I didn't list them all by any means. But those programs are made possible in part, now not completely, but in part by your faithful support mm -hmm. of this ministry. The family entertainment program, we're looking at doing some additional and new things there. Those things are supplied by your gifts to the Family Safe Haven programming uh, donations. We really need more people involved. We don't have a large enough base. We need more people to come alongside and participate. We would invite you to visit our website at kazq32.org to give safely online. You can also allocate a certain day of the month if that's easier for you and it will do it automatically. If you'd like to speak to someone, you can do that at 505-884-8355 extension 101 and we can take that information from you. If you have your donation ready, you send it to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico 87109. There are different levels of involvement. Family Safe Haven of $32 a month, which goes towards family safe programming and also the president partner level with your gift of $50, $75, or $100. Whatever you do, we do it better together when we connect and we link arms and say, we're going to do this. God uses us in a great way. So thank you so much. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We have with us today Reverend Mike Derrick, who is the principal at Evangel Christian Academy. We're going to talk about Christian education a little bit today. Mike, good to have you back with us. It's been a while. Thank you for inviting me to come back on again. Well, we're excited to learn some of the new things that are happening at Evangel Christian Academy and happening in the realm of Christian education. Um, one of the things, of course, where we start off is uh, just kind of liking to Find out how long have you been involved in, in the education area of uh, responsibility and kind of what drew you into that? Uh, I've been involved with Christian education since uh, 1980, I believe, when we first started a Christian school back in Pennsylvania. I've been a part of Evangel Christian Academy since 2000, along with my wife. Uh, so we've been here well over 20 years, and I've been a part of administration for well over 10 years now. So you have, have a lot of experience and you've, you've seen a lot of things happen in Christian education. I think one of the things that, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, enrollment and all of those things. But one of the things I think that's interesting is, is what's the need? Why do people, you know, want Christian education today? I know when I, I had the privilege of going to Christian school uh, for most of my life. My early years were in public school, but beyond that, you know, middle of elementary got into Christian school. And I know in those days there was really the push to give kids a, a Christian foundation. Is that still the reasoning? I, I believe so. Uh, as we see things happening out in the world and in our public schools, uh, more and more people are realizing they want other options uh, that they can, opportunities uh, of educating their children. And Christian education is one of those opportunities they're looking at at this point. So, you know, our doors are open. We want to see as many students as we can uh, to learn the ways of God, that they have that solid foundation under them when they go out into the world. Uh, they're ready to meet the world and uh, the things that are out in the world. The Christian worldview, <coughs> you know, is, is yes. important. It's, it's easy to have a worldview that's shaped and twisted by a lot of different <coughs> voices and things that are anti-God or humanistic, but 
really having uh, a God-centric uh, worldview is, is critical. Well, 23-24 school year is going to be here before you know it. Are you beginning the enrollment process for that yet or not quite? Yes, we started open enrollment in uh, the beginning of February. Many of our students have already re-enrolled for next year, which we're very thankful for. And we are enrolling students from um, other places as well, new students coming in. We're very thankful for that. And if you're interested, you know, if you have a daughter, a son, a grandchild, please come by and see the school. We'll give you a tour and, and let you uh, see what edu Christian education is all about. You know, uh, class sizes are something that we've heard about for a long time. I know we hear about that in the news because they're always trying to, to focus getting a, a, a good ratio of, of students to teachers so it won't be too many kids in the classroom. What's, what could somebody expect at your school uh, in terms of class sizes? Well, our class sizes vary. Uh, I have some classes we only have six students in at the moment, and so they're getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one with their teacher. I have some that are around 14, 15, and so they're very small class sizes, which gives the teacher an opportunity to uh, teach each student, spend some quality time with each student in the classroom. Let's talk about some of the things that makes Evangel Christian Academy unique, because there are, you know, multiple uh, options in the community, whether we're talking about public schools or charter schools, and then we get into the Christian school <laughs> realm or private school realm, mm -hmm. and certainly, you know, a, a city the size of Albuquerque has different <laughs> things that are out there at different places. So what uh, distinguishes Evangel Christian Academy from someplace else? Well, for one thing, we offer two chapel services a week, one for our high school and one for our primary school. Uh, our children's pastor is one of our staff members, so the kids can come and talk to her and, and you know, I give prayer with her anytime. Our youth pastor is always available as well. So we're thankful for that. We also have a fine arts program that's unique to Evangel. Uh, our kids did very well on the national level last year, and they're already preparing for this year for uh, mid-March for another event coming up. And I was talking to youth pastor last night. She says, my students are ready. <laughs> wow, well, it's good to have confidence that they're doing that. Now, when you talk yes. about fine arts, it's kind of a, a broad topic. What does that conclude? Drama, yeah. music, things Drama, like that? Drama, music, uh, preaching. Uh, they can sing solos, a choir. We usually have a whole choir that sings together. Uh, puppet ministry, children's lessons, and we have students doing all those things this year. Art, we had some students oh, okay. last year that so did art. And, and photography? Some, no? Uh, yes. No, it's not really photography. They're actually paint. Well, some of it is photography. Some of it, they're actually doing some paintings. So uh, different yeah. types of art. Different types of art going, and that's something. Writing new. categories, I think. Yes, writing categories. They can write short stories, poems. There's a lot of different categories they can get involved in in fine arts. Now, I understand that one of the things that you do is uh, promote heavily, because my, my kids were involved with this when they were in Christian school, and they went to Evangel as well. Uh, you have a dual credit program, at least did back in the day. Do you still today? Yes, yes. Um, we have a dual credit program with a local community college here in Albuquerque. This has been going on for several years with the Evangel, um, and we're still continuing this program. Last year, we had a student that graduated from CNM with her associate's degree before she graduated from Evangel. Wow. Uh, this year, I have a student, he's going to graduate or he's planning to graduate in August from CNM and, of course, graduate with us in the spring uh, before he goes on to another college. So it's a program we are really pushing. Uh, the idea is to get the kids uh, interested in college. You know, there are things uh, after high school you can get interested in. Sure. Uh, and, we, you know, we want to start pushing the trades as well because local community colleges offer... Uh, you know, being an electrician or a plumber or a carpenter or a contractor. Sure. a wide variety. Uh, wide of variety. They're even pushing uh, a teaching program now. And so, you know, we want to see our kids get involved in all those areas. When you think about <coughs> uh, the dual credit program, one of the things that I've observed, and you, I'd love to hear your, what your experience is, <coughs> is that it seems to take away a little bit of the fear of what college could be like because they're already experiencing it. Uh, in, in, a, in a high school uh, uh, basis, and, and when you say dual credit, that means that it, it has a high school credit and a college credit. Is that right? That's correct. They get uh, each class is three credits at the local community college, plus they get one credit with us. 
uh, for that. And as you said, uh, I like to push our, all of our students to take at least one class just so they have the experience of college and find out it's not as bad as they thought it was. Do they do these classes online? Do they do them on <coughs> ground at the community college or is it a combination? Uh, uh, it's a combination. Most of my students are taking online classes okay. since the pandemic. Uh, online classes is the way to go. But I do have one student that is going to campus a couple times a week. It's mostly a study group, but he has to be on campus for this one program. It's interesting how uh, the college life has changed so much of it to online. So it's, it's good that you know everybody is being adaptive <coughs> in that regard. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your staff. You know, what, what can someone um, expect from the staff at Evangel Christian Academy? Our staff are um, well-grounded Christians. Many of them have been saved and have been serving the Lord for many years. So they're well-grounded in their faith. They're dedicated to uh, Christian education. Of course, you know, they're not getting paid the greatest. So that's the, the reason, because they're dedicated to seeing these children uh, learn the ways of God and uh, from a Christian worldview. Um, I have uh, teachers that have been with us well over 10 years well, I was going to ask that. Do you have longevity with your staff? Yes. Because that's uh, always a question that people yes. are turning over. Uh, I have uh, half of my staff have been with us for over 10 years that's now. Wonderful. And one of them has been with us for over 20 years. Uh, so they're very dedicated for their work and we really appreciate that. Well, the school has <laughs> been in existence since what, the 1970s? 1976. Okay, yes. 1976. That's a that's a long time. That's, that's back when they had the bicentennial. You, know, you remember the bicentennial <laughs> yes. quarters, man? I remember that. So kind of the, the same year that the uh, school was founded. But are there new things? Because you know nothing stays the same. Are you seeing anything new added to your uh, curriculums or extra extracurricular activities? As I said, with C and M, we're looking at you know maybe getting into some of their uh, trade programs. Also, starting last spring, we started an esports team. Uh, last year we didn't do very good. I happened to be the coach. Uh -oh. uh, but Was it this based year, on the bad coaching? I <laughs> <Yeah>. don't know. <laughs> uh, but this year uh, we're undefeated wow. <laughs> so far. All right. um, of course, we have several weeks to go yet with the esports, and uh, the kids are really excited. What is esports? I mean, tell well, what we're doing a, a is uh, it's a varsity program through the Mexico Activities Association. Uh, it's varsity, and they're playing other high schools. So we sit in one room, and we play another high school that could be clear across the state. And they're video uh, games? They're video games. Wow. We're, we, we happen to be playing Mario Brothers this year. Wow. And so all four of my students can race at the same time against four of their students. And so then, like Mario Kart? Uh, it, Mario like Kart. Wow. And then they can trade in and race other uh, students as well. So it's a lot of fun. Well, information has <laughs> been on the screen about <laughs> enrollment and uh, how you can inquire. And uh, the phone number is right there. Is that the best way to get in contact or the website? Yes, that's the best way to get uh, the best way is to call us and we can set up a tour for you to come by and, and see our school. Great. Yes. Appreciate sharing today with Mike Derek, principal at Evangel Christian Academy, hearing about Christian education right here in the city of Albuquerque. Second Kings, and as we go there, we're going to read about a great prophet of the Old Testament by the name of Elisha. Now, Elisha is involved in something interesting, almost divine subterfuge in yes, almost the spy story, mm -hmm. as he is revealing to the king of Israel where their enemy, which is the king of Aram or the Syrians, are going to be coming to try to attack or entrap the Israelites. And this, uh, this happens several times, and the, the king of uh, of Syria, the Arameans, he becomes very angry and, and they tell him, well, it's, it's this prophet. So he sends, dispatches troops to capture him, uh, Elisha. Let's read a little bit about that, coming down to around verse 14 and 15. Okay. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. It's very interesting because, first of all, his response is like so many of our responses when we have a problem. Mm. What will we do? God, yeah. what shall we do? And the response that Elisha tells him, he tells him really three things. Let's look at it very quickly. He tells him, first of all, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the message that God gives to us over and over again in Scripture is don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want, he tells the people that. He tells people uh, when they see an angel, one of the first statements usually is don't be afraid, right? God, he assures them. And that's the statement that Elisha makes to his servant. The second thing that he says to him is he reveals through God's power the, that the spiritual truth that defies the natural understanding. Mm -hmm. he, he tells him that he wants him to, for God to open his eyes so he can see what's really mm -hmm. there. And, and the scripture describes <laughs> that the things that he sees uh, are things that are divine because it's an uh, army of... Yep. Uh, of angels? Yes. He was seeing what in the physical, and he was afraid because in the physical, that's what you see. But uh, verse 16 and 17 says, Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elijah prayed, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. You know, and, and for time's sake, for one reason, I think we'll just stop there. We don't really have time to go further. But it's important for us to understand. Don't be afraid. That's a choice. You have to choose whether or not you're going to receive God's peace or to choose to be afraid. And secondly, allow God to speak to you the supernatural truths that come to us through His Word and the inner witness of the Holy Spirit that many times defy uh, understanding. A peace that passes understanding. It gives us greater knowledge of what God is doing. Thanks for being with us today. Have a blessed day. 